Welcome to Lecture Online, and here we're going to look at RCL circuits and complex numbers. So as I alluded to, the, to that in the first video, we're, we're going to be able to express the impedance, which is the opposition to current, of uh, inductors and capacitors in terms of what we call complex numbers. And if you remember what complex numbers are, complex numbers have a real part and an imaginary part. So if you assume that the horizontal axis is the axis of the real numbers, called the number line, which represents the real numbers, then any numbers that's off the axis, above or below the axis, is an imaginary number. So it has an imaginary part. And so in this particular case, let's say that this complex number has a real part, which is equal to 3, 1, 2, 3, and has an imaginary part, which is equal to 2i. Now, i is the square root of negative 1, which causes it to be an imaginary number, because there's really no such thing as a square root of negative 1, but it's a really handy tool to help us figure out how to write a complex number, something with an imaginary part. So we can write this as 3 plus 2i, that would be this number right there, off the number line, two units away from the number line, so the imaginary part has a magnitude or an amplitude of two units. So let's now see how we can relate that to our RCL circuit. Now here we have an inductor. Usually inductors have a small amount of resistance to them because an inductor is a long wire that's coiled up and a long piece of wire does have some resistance. So let's call that R sub L for the resistance of the inductor and of course then we have the inductor part as well. We still have a resistor here, we still have a capacitor, but let's only concentrate on the inductor. In this case, the opposition to the current of the inductor is 50 ohms, and then the resistance of the inductor, R sub L, is 20 ohms. Now, we don't really talk about resistance of an inductor. We tend to talk about, about it as in terms of reactance. So we call the X, as we call, we use the letter X, we call that reactance, and it's something like resistance. It has the same units as resistance, but the reason why we call it reactance is because it reacts to the time varying voltage from the source. So this is the voltage from the source, and as the source changes over time, because it oscillates between max and min, then it reacts to that changing voltage source, therefore we call it reactance, but it's kind of like resistance. So think of reactance kind of like resistance. But reactance is considered the imaginary part of the total opposition to the current. So we're going to write the total opposition to the current in terms of a complex number, and we're going to call it impedance. So Z, which is a term, again, it's another term, it's again opposition to current, but it's a combination of the real and imaginary part together. So the impedance of a component against the current flow is equal to the real part of the impedance, which is the resistance, plus the imaginary part of the opposition, which is the reactance. So the impedance is the sum of the real part and the imaginary part. Again, I is the square root of negative 1, and so that again is one of those complex numbers. So in the case of this particular inductor, we can say that the impedance of the inductor is equal to the resistance of the inductor plus I times the reactance of the inductor, and we call that X sub L. So in this case, we can see that Z sub L is equal to 20 ohms, that's the real part of the opposition, which is, that came from the, re, the resistor in the inductor, or the resistive property of the inductor, plus I times 50 ohms. And there, that would be the impedance of that inductor. Now, if we're going to draw that on a graph, it would look like this. Notice the horizontal axis would indicate the resistance, the vertical axis would indicate the reactance. So this is X, this is R. Notice it's 20 ohms in the, of the real part, so that let's say that's 10, 20 ohms right there, 20 ohms. And then we have 50 ohms in the positive Y direction, so to speak, or the positive reactance direction. So that's 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. There we go. And then when we combine these two together, there they meet right there, and this here is what we would call the impedance. That's the impedance of that particular component, and that impedance has a real part caused by the resistance and an imaginary part caused by the coil or the inductor. All right? And that's how we look at impedance, and that's how we indicate that. Now notice that it will have what we call a phase angle. That impedance has a phase angle, it's this angle right here, theta, and of course, if you want to find that phase angle, the phase angle theta is equal to the arc tangent of the opposite side, which would be the imaginary part. That would be x 
divided by the horizontal side, which is the real part, r. So in this case, the phase angle would be the arctangent of the reactance, which is 50 ohms, divided by the resistance, which is 20 ohms. And so it simply would be the arctangent of, of 50 over 20. Well, let's see that, 50, 50 divided by 20. Take the arctangent of that, and it would be 68.2 degrees. So that phase angle in this case is 68.2 degrees. And how did we find that? By simply drawing the uh, resistance and the reactance of a circuit in terms of a complex number, and then knowing that this diagonal right here, the vector sum in a way, or the sum of the real part and imaginary part combined, gives you the impedance or the total opposition of that particular component. And so that's the idea of using complex numbers. Um, in, the ex in, the ex in the representation, and that's the word I was looking for, in the representation of how we represent the opposition of these components to the current flow or to the voltage source by turning the opposition, writing it in terms of the imaginary part reactance, the real part resistance, and combined we call that the impedance, which is now represented by a complex number indicating the opposition to the current using this type kind of notation. So hopefully that made sense. Now we're going to start using this information to, to show you how to actually solve for the current and the total resistance and the total impedance and the power usage and so forth of these particular circuits.